Shrewd Manager Christianity's Position From the Incredibly Accurate Forensic Detail of the Chest Wound The Shroud Looks Real, Not Fake Here are photographs of the chest wound The commentary comes from Pierre Barbet The World War I Battlefield Surgeon We've Seen in Earlier Videos His exemplary thoroughness is on display here One can clearly distinguish, he said, an oval stain from which the blood issued even without reference to the shroud, it is certain that the lance struck in front, since the back was protected by the cross. It must also be from the right. A blow from the left would have pierced the ventricles, which in a corpse have no blood in them. The marks of blood have a precise outline, he continued, giving the impression of being thicker at the edges. Here and there they seem to be surrounded by an aureole of a much paler color like sort of a halo. We shall see that this is produced by the serum which exudes from blood which had recently congealed on the skin. As confirmation of Barbet's observation, you see the serum ring clearly in this recent UV photo. Barbet cites experiments of another forensic expert that show each undulation of the stain's edge corresponds with the protrusions of the serratus magnus muscle. Pathologist Robert Buckland adds that the blood flows downward without splatter, in a passive drainage characteristic of post-mortem blood. Barbet saw by light of day that the back stain is caused by a flow of blood, and explained that when Jesus was lanced, the right oracle, and probably also the superior vena cava both emptied, but the inferior vena cava, which lies below it, remained full. When the body was carried horizontally to the tomb, the blood of the inferior vena cava would have flowed back into the heart and out the tunnel made by the lance. This fresh flow would slip round the right side, accounting for the blood belt. Barbet then tested his observations. He used the shroud man's sternum as a fixed point of reference and measured out the location of the wound. Then he cut out a little metal plate, the size and shape of the wound, placed it on a suitable volunteer, and took x-rays. The plate was easily seen on the x-rays, as was the rib cage and internal organs. The lance would have entered above the sixth rib, perforated the fifth intercostal space, and penetrated deeply beyond it. This blow from the right was always fatal. This modern x-ray shows us the most likely path. Ever the diligent investigator, Barbet then experimented on dead bodies. Eventually, with a large amputation knife and a syringe, he drew out considerable quantities of blood and pericardial fluid. Last, Barbet autopsied the cadavers to confirm the path. Barbet tells us another medical specialist independently performed similar experiments with similar results. In the 90 years since Barbet started publishing, in that era's version of peer-reviewed journals, his findings on the path of the blade and blood remain widely accepted, but two recent challenges are worth mentioning. We briefly covered one in video 1.3. Barbet concludes the watery substance is pericardial fluid, but more recent pathologists offer two other sources. Since all three options are medically valid, any satisfy the needs of these videos. The second challenge comes from this 2018 article in the Journal of Forensic Sciences, a BPA approach to the Shroud of Turin. BPA is blood pattern analysis. The researchers state, The BPA of blood visible on the frontal side of the chest shows that the shroud represents the bleeding in a realistic manner for a standing position. However, the stains at the back are totally unrealistic. Popular media is enamored of this article, as you see. This 2023 article in the International Journal of Legal Medicine takes up the challenge. Using diluted post-mortem blood on a dead body, they reproduced the blood belt. They also applied post-mortem blood onto post-mortem serum and produced serum rings very similar to what's on the shroud. This blog post critiques the BPA article in detail. My own take is simple. First, Barbet is too thorough to be dismissed merely with pig blood on a mannequin. Second, I know something about gravity. To better reproduce the back stains, it looks like the BPA researcher should have mimicked the body's likely journey from the cross to the tomb. 
upright, then angled, then jostled, then horizontal, before making a ruling. Stabbing a vertical mannequin, then a horizontal mannequin, is what's totally unrealistic. Third, the BPA article's only challenge to shroud authenticity is its statement that the stains at the back are totally unrealistic. That's all we have to rebut. We've just seen experiments that do just that. They show the stains can be reproduced with human blood on a dead body, so the back stains are not totally unrealistic. Whenever the Gospels are silent about a detail, like where Jesus was stabbed, a forger has a chance to mess up. The shroud never seems to guess wrong, though. Its positions are always defensible. Here it is spectacularly right. So does the shroud appear to have wrapped a dead man? Yes. Name a work of art from 1300 or earlier that is so anatomically correct it can be autopsied, with blood stains that have been reproduced by stabbing a corpse, with blood trails that have been reproduced using diluted post-mortem blood, with serum halos visible only because of photography and UV technology. Next, not all blood stains overlay precisely on the image. Does this mean an artist goofed? 